Hi, I'm Peter Harrop. I'm chairman of ID TechX. I'm going to tell you a little bit about the electric vehicle work we do. Uh, we see electric vehicles as uh, one thing, land, water and air. There are going to be electric aircraft that are being planned that will land on a terminal building. There are going to be, indeed there already are, underwater electric vehicles. And right through to the electric car, the amazing thing is they're going to change completely. Every single part is changing, even the bodywork is no longer going to be uh, dumb metal or bent plastic, it's going to be intelligent, it's going to have sensors in, it's going to have a nervous system like the human being. It's also going to have uh, storage like the batteries and the rest, they're going to be part of the body so they take no space at all. So we study those things, we write the books, we do the events on that and all the new materials and the new components coming in, radically new components, and try and grasp when we have a tipping point. For instance, pure electric cars, we think that right now really they're a failure. There are specialist ones like Tesla that have some success, but the mainstream ones, they're really not liked. They don't go far enough, they cost too much, and so on. But that is all going to change in only a few years, within five to ten years, there'll be a tipping point. Just like mobile phones, suddenly we all wanted the new versions and suddenly they sold in massive quantities. Um, with electric vehicles, with electric cars, we believe that there's going to be a tipping point and other things are going to come in as well. This year we've seen success for the first time with electric motorbikes. Uh, real commercial success, not just hobbyist experiments. And we're going to see that with electric lawn mowers and many other things. So we look at the road maps, we try and see what will happen when and what are the opportunities, what are the gaps in the market. And so the people who buy our reports and take our advice, uh, they're people who may be making the materials, the components, the vehicles themselves, or even operating the materials. But we try as best we can to see the future. So the electric car is the solution for many of the problems in society. like. If you want to uh, use renewable, you might want to use the battery to store energy and, and send it back to the smart grid. Yes, and uh, it's not just a case of um, settling for something worse because it saves the planet or reduces local pollution. Very often these things perform much better. So the acceleration of the electric motorbikes is exceptional and people like that. Uh, and also with uh, some of the other electric vehicles, they're doing things that weren't possible before and uh, that means we're coming into a very new world and that links in with a whole world of uh, autonomous cars that drive themselves and uh, a whole range of other things that are coming in uh, linked to the super grid, the smart grid and so on and so on. So as a chairman of ID TechX, what kind of things do you do every day? Well, I do an awful lot of traveling. I have been in the last few weeks in Japan twice. I've been in Taiwan once. I've lectured in Germany, but I've lectured in Surrey University in the UK. And now I'm here in California. So feet not touching the ground, but loving every minute. Lots of things are happening in Japan, in Taiwan. Uh... Yes, that's right. Um, Japan is in many ways the center of electric vehicles in that it has uh, a lot of the leaders in the components and the vehicles. but. It's not one country that wins really. Amazing things happen in quite small countries that simply have people, often young people, uh, with imagination. In Finland they've got a flying jet ski. Good for them. I hope it'll be a success. Flying? <laughs> a flying jet ski. And in uh, Sweden they've got um, amphibious uh, electric aircraft that are hybrid electric and they take off on the land or on the water and they're used for commercial use as well as leisure use. It's who has the imagination in the four corners of the world. So we do need to travel and go and meet people. You can't do all this by just searching the web. You need to meet people and see in their eyes what they really do believe uh, these guys, they're going to do and form your own judgments. So what do you talk about in your lectures? Well, all these things. We talk about the materials, the components, the actual vehicles. We try to link together new technologies and what they're good for and what is really hyped. Some things are terribly exaggerated and are not really going to happen. Uh, often we get told, like in Japan recently, I was told by a number of companies, they said, well, thank goodness you're not those sorts of analysts who always have a graph going up. Whatever it is, whether it's the Internet of Things, electric vehicles, printed electronics, energy harvesting, the things we cover, for instance, and other things, uh, they say uh, some analysts are just selling 
um, everything going up, everything's going to be wonderful, nothing will fail. And the real world's not like that, and they find that a bit insulting. So we do sometimes say, look, we think this one really is going nowhere, or this one is just a novelty peak, it's going to be a one-year wonder, it's going to die. It's our job to have the courage to say uh, what we think is negative, not just be ludicrously positive. All right, so what, what, what excites you the most? Is that when you see n like new ideas and yes. people putting new stuff Yes. And making something new. Yes. I Real think, innovation. Yes, I think that's true. I think uh, a lot of things people predict will be um, just more of the same but a bit better. But the real world is, uh, particularly marketing-led companies, they come up with radically new ideas. Uh, like the winner of a uh, prize recently with wearable electronics was... Uh, a quadcopter on your wrist that can take up and take photographs. I'd love to have one of those and I'd like to use it to photograph sculptures and make my own one to go in my garden. Uh, but it's crazy things like that, some of which come right in a spectacular way uh, that, that you really have to find and not just a, a slightly improved TV set. The world doesn't operate that way. And sometimes there are some awesome ideas, but if they don't have money to mass, pro mass produce, it just stays in a lab, a demo, right? Yes. So it's also about money. Well, that's right. The world has changed. It used to be pinstripe suited elderly men who would uh, uh, have the money and you'd have to plead with them for money if you had some new idea. Now you can go to, for instance, Kickstarter on the web and you're not selling any of your company. You're getting an order book. You're telling people that if you give us, give us some money, we'll give you some of the first examples of the products we're intending to make and so you find you get an order book that used not to be the case and then you can go to people yes maybe traditional venture capitalists but other people business angels rich people there are many ways of getting the money from government from local government from national government and so on and so money is less often a problem than you might think in fact our particular company we didn't need money at all we made profits from day one and also your international day one, even in our case a company that's a knowledge business that's uh, doing events and uh, consultancy and publications. Uh, the world is your oyster, you get up and you get out there and uh, make money and plough it back in. And, and so there's a lot of nonsense talked about national problems and money problems and all the rest. The important thing is to believe in yourself and get on with it. And so around here in the Silicon Valley, there's a bunch of people with a little bit of money over there, well, like the, sure know about the it. Apple and the Intel and the, <laughs> sure and Google. It. Google yeah, is here. Right. Yeah, and so if they, they, maybe they yes. come to the conference, all of them, and uh, yes. they find something good they and they put a billion dollars into do. it. They do. That's right. But the interesting thing is other people sitting in the back are quite interesting. There's Boeing from up the coast. There's Boeing lecturing. Uh, there's uh, people like Swarovski and jewelry. They're all coming from very unusual areas. Uh, to see what's uh, in it for them and a lot of them are very active in it are very active in it already and uh, the iPhone is a huge success but maybe people want to see the next thing like the wearable or what what it could be and maybe you're showing it right here well I, I don't think uh, it's uh, I don't think we're far, far enough along to be certain what wearable things will be a huge success but we actually think that healthcare is a very big thing uh, people will pay a lot of money for a skin patch that gives them more freedom, makes them feel better in their old age or whatever. Uh, the use of uh, electronics on the body and around the body for uh, well-being and so on. So, you know, we all know about the fitness bands and all the rest. They've had something of a novelty peak, but they're coming back again. But um, there's much more to it than that. And there are enduring things. And I do tend to think that Probably things like um, Google Glass and the Sony Smart, uh, the Apple Smartwatch and Sony Smartwatch and so on, they won't necessarily appear in the history books as the main story. Uh, it's interesting, but we're tracking it all very closely. We admire all those people, what they're doing, uh, and a lot of the things are going to be quite revolutionary, quite revolutionary. But it's it's not talking about one or two famous companies or with one or two famous products. We we are tracking now thousands of companies with unbelievable ideas and inventions and it's not just wearable technology on humans, it's animals. We've got a report on wearable technology on animals and there's a lot of it. And some things being done with your local racehorse are in advance of what they're doing with you. So stick around, one day you'll catch up with the way they look after the racehorses.
I want to put a tracker on all my cats. Yeah, yeah. People will pay a lot of money to know where their cat goes at night and it uh, sounds frivolous but there are a lot of those things now available and uh, the preservation of rare species, there's a lot now being done to monitor them and to assist them. We need to put sensors all over, uh, you know, uh, the, the Africa so people don't go and kill the elephants. That's true too, that's absolutely true, yes. Okay. Sensors everywhere is part of the future. Yes, it is. So see you at the conference. Shall do. Good.